All right, here we are again with that exhibition on the uh, Victrola 9, 1920. This is the original reproducer from this machine. It was in really nice shape and it's now fully rebuilt. I had to adjust it a minute ago for the back gas. These new back gaskets, you always have to adjust them a little bit to fit the tone arm properly. Two ways to do this. One, a little file, a little bit of sandpaper will take just on the outer edge here just to take the burrs off, in case there are any. But more common is just to bend the lips a little bit where, it, where the slot is, where it slides in. Just a tiny, very gentle bend there. Until it fits, this should not be loose on the tone arm. Sometimes you gotta tighten them up, sometimes you gotta loose them a little bit to get them on. But uh, they should be a firm fit. Not so tight you can't get it on and off easily, but a firm fit. And the way to do that like is just adjust those lips right there on the end of the elbow where the, uh, the pin slides in. Just Bend them up a little bit in or out. Open them up a little bit, rather, I should say. Uh, we have another copy of, what was this again? I forget. It's a little bit. Uh, Art Landry and his orchestra, the Whisper Song. It's not really in the best shape, but we're going to try it anyway. Kill two birds with one stone here. Test the record and test a, new reprodu a newly rebuilt reproducer. Okay, let's see. Oh, first, we should set the auto brake. I think right about there. We'll see. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. Okay. I see we have a little bit of warping going on here. Okay, we got a lot of warping going on here. I got it that time. Okay. It occurs to me that I actually have the entire lineup of potential reproducers you could have in 1920 for a Victrola 9. You have the original it came with from the factory, which was the exhibition. You have, well, not gold-plated, but it would have been chrome. 
I mean nickel plated. You have the Victrola number no. two, which would have been an option in 1920 for this machine. You have the number four, which would have come along later. This, by 1925, you would have had the opportunity to put one of these on your 1920 machine if you wanted to. And, of course, the aftermarkets. <laughs> Hold the, okay, what did we have on this side? I flipped it. I didn't look at it. Our wobbly record. Oh, one o'clock baby. That's right. Our wobbly one o'clock baby. Yeah, well, one o'clock in the morning, I'm wobbly too. Okay, let's see. Let's put a needle on there. So far, the reproducer sounded good. Which is what I was hoping for, because you never really know. I reused the, di uh, the diaphragm on this because it was in such nice condition. You know, there was no cracks, no splits, no delaminating, but you never really know if it's going to be good until you actually play it. So it's always a risk, not much of one. At worst, I would have to take it apart again and readjust the needle bar afterwards and all of that. Not the end of the world. But... I always like to use original stuff if I can, and when they're in really nice shape, not all scuffed up, scratched, and nasty, then I will. I will use it. And it seems to be paying off this time, because it does sound good. Okay, let's see this wobbly record here. Try not to drop it. twice in a row. All right, let's, that's sounding good so far. That was actually a Victor Electric wobbly record here. All right, let me find another record. That there does get damaged. How about an OK? An OK record by the General Phonograph Corporation of New York, Parade of the Wooden Soldiers by OK. OK. A little bit worn looking, but we'll give it a shot. I should probably wind it up. So, hold on a second here while I wind that. Ah, 
that should do it. And I imagine a new needle would help. That's always a good idea when you play a record. Put the needle on. Okay. And take the camera off the turntable before you fire up the motor. Let's see. I think we'll have to back that off a little bit. You think that'll do it? Maybe. That might do it. That might do it. You see, the Victor Electrics of the Eccentric, they're easy because you know just where to put it. These you kind of got to guess, especially when it's not a Victor record. This one's got a little wobble too. What is it with wobbly records in this lot? Not gonna do it. No, just a little bit off. Oh well, maybe the next record. So far, so good. Actually played pretty good. Wasn't quite sure. And you can see it's, yeah. <laughs> that's not dirt, that's scuffing. That's wear. It's been around a long time. Dirty spot. Let's see if Romany Love, uh, or a lovely Lucerne. That's side A. We'll start with side A. The Great White Way Orchestra and Paul Whitman. We'll start with Romany Love. Let's see what that is. I don't know if I've ever played. That might be one from my old collection. I might have played it the last time. Uh, 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 uh. Before I can set the speed, uh, the stop, I have to first put a needle on there. Right now, push that out of the way. And I'm thinking this does not have an eccentric. Think it'll work right there? You see, if you don't set these right, what happens is they don't work at all, or it shuts the record off before 
the song is finished. Nobody likes that. So we'll try it there. I mean, you could always shut it off manually. It's not the end of the world just to flick the switch. Perfection. That time it worked. Okay. Doing pretty good with that. We got one failure and three successes so far. Okay, what was the other flip side of this? Lovely Lucerne, that's right. The great white way orchestra. Okay, we're gonna have to do some needle swapping here. I should probably spin it up. Crank it up. You'll notice I'm playing this machine with the lid up today. That's mostly because I'm too lazy to get up and close the lid every time. So, that's okay. A little bit of reproducer hiss, and frankly, there hasn't been that much in this one, possibly because it's rebuilt. That's another good reason to rebuild your reproducers. If you want your machine to sound good, like this one does, rebuild the reproducer or have it done. There are plenty of people out there who do it. Especially common ones like exhibitions and number twos, number fours, those are the easy ones. Harder are that, that aftermarket there that I did in the last video. Because you never know what parts you need for those. Sometimes parts simply aren't available and you have to make them yourself, gaskets and whatnot. You have to be creative. That could be a little more expensive to have done. And not many people will spend the money to do it, preferring instead just to simply go to eBay and just buy an exhibition for your Victor machine anyway. Or a number two. Or 
Not so common the number four, because usually all you ever find in those is the pot metal ones. And they are rarely any good. Actually, they're never any good. Who am I kidding? Pot metal reproducers on those things were horrible. I mean, they were great when they were new. And they were great for the first, what happened here? I should have gone the other way. They were great, uh, you know, for the first probably 20 or 30 years, but um, what do you think? Right about there? Think that might do it? Mm, I don't know. We'll give it a shot. Excuse the compressor. Let's see if we can drown out the noise of the compressor with the noise of the record. success okay well that's good enough for now I'll end up playing a lot more records both to test the machine out continue well there was does really any testing but just to smooth out the new lubrications and stuff that's in it and uh, push the reproducer a little bit and see how she performs make sure everything's good then it'll be wrapped up and put away and the next one will take its place got lots more including more nines and a few more coming up next month including an Eldor and a very, very early tabletop Model 11. And some other ones, plus I have the Electrola to do and two more 101s. So actually, I thought I had three 101s to do. I actually have four. So we'll be getting to those two. I already did the one not too long ago, and that's going to go be put away for now, and I'll move on to the next project. Okay. Successful test of the Exhibition Reproducer 
on the Victor Victrola. Can you even see that? Yeah, you can see it. 491-434-1920. Victor Victrola, the Knight. 